guys, it's BNL, and no, I'm not playing Ocarina of Time. You may have thought I was playing it, but I'm not. Uh, I'm going to give you the heads up, firstly. I'm not going through the training room. We're just going to go straight to medium. If you want to play the game yourself, that's okay. Play the training room, yeah, sure. But it's not really that interesting, and, you know, yeah. Uh, so anyway, we're going to jump in on medium, because hard is hard. Anyway, yeah, so Half-Life. Um, here's a bit of a forewarning. This game is a bit gory, so to speak, because there's blood of the Black Mesa Research Facility place. Uh, but I will have to give you a bit of a side note. This is 1998. It, it looks dated. It's, of course, not realistic. It's just if you're not into this kind of stuff. I'll give the warning. This first part won't deal with any of that because... What this game does very nicely is that it does the whole first 15 minutes just very nicely with a, um... Like, it feels like a normal day, and that's a loading screen. It's a second pause and stuff, so it doesn't break immersion, really. Um, but anyway, yeah, I love this game a lot. I think it's a better game than the than the sequel. The sequel is probably the, be the, more, the more fun of a game, but this game just seems to be a lot more solid. If you know what I mean. The second game is the better engine, the better graphics, the better uh, variety in game levels. I'm gonna stop walking around. Uh, yeah, the second game obviously has the better, the better features. But this game just has that nice atmosphere. It has the, and it also has some of the better design sections, so to speak. It also deals with a lot more enemies. That's one plus because with Half-Life 2, it a lot of the challenge just comes from not big monsters, but more so just big lots of enemies. I mean, this game has bosses. It has like four of them, I think. And it doesn't attempt to break immersion. It's just, you know, all there. Uh, anyway, so yeah, this ran, this game ran on an old version of the sort of the Source Engine, of the, of the, uh, or actually ran on a fancy new modification for the Quake 2 engine, I believe. So if you've ever played Quake 2, you'd kind of find similarities. In fact, yeah, you find a lot of similarities with Quake 2. Uh, there's, there's quite a few things different, I know. Um, but yeah. So anyway, yeah, so this beginning section, you just ride on this car for about, like, five minutes. Um, it, it, yeah, it's supposed to deliver the thought that it's just a regular day at work. And that's one thing I love about this game, is that it doesn't jump you into the action. And I don't think, Half-Life 2 doesn't do that either. Half-Life 2... Half-Life 2 is extremely immersive with it. This one's kind of a bit of a hold-up. This one... Well, Half-Life 2 basically kind of makes it, it's like, oh gosh, I gotta get away from here. This one kind of feels like, oh yeah, it's just a regular day at work. Oh snap, bad stuff. So yeah. Now, I will be documenting the map changes you may have seen. Lighting, that's, that's fancy. Thank you, email. Um, but yeah, um... Yeah, this game, I don't know, I just like it a bit more. The expansions, they made a two two expansions, they're not really expansions because they're standalone games, but they basically run off the same idea. In fact, they're more or so different perspective games. The other two Half-Life, Half-Life 2 episodes, those ones are a bit more of expansions, like they continue the story in just episodic way, rather than just one big game. And while I appreciate that, I don't like paying full price for that kind of stuff. Thankfully, it's not full price. Please. Unless, you, unless if it is a full game, you know, because it's only half. Episode one is a lot shorter of a game than Half Life Two, of course. It's only half the length, so so you'd expect to pay only half the price, but it's actually like eight bucks. But Half Life Two is ten, so and I know it uses newer technology, but like, come on, come on. A reminder to all black. Uh, so anyway, yeah. So, yeah, this beginning section may be dragging on. Make sure you stick around for the second part. The second part is actually when it will get jumping into action, and I've timed this before. And, oh, hello, Mr. Business Suit Man. How are you doing? Dude, why aren't you talking to him? You're so antisocial. Um, but anyway, yeah, so, um... What was I saying? Yeah, this first part, I'm gonna cut it off at right at that moment where... 
Work safe. Where Work the action smart. starts up. So, th don't judge this game based on the first part. Okay? Now arriving at judge it on the second part and possibly the entire game. Because that's what you should judge a game on, on the first two hours. Although the first two hours can make you feel like you don't want to play the game anymore. This game definitely does keep the... Whoa. Jeez, that loading screen didn't even pop up. It was just like, oh yeah, load. Um, by the way, some of the some of the models in this game uh, are high quality models which are based on a patch and unfortunately well, fortunately Steam automatically does that for you. If you play the source version of this, because I ported this over to the source engine, the old models are used, I believe. So you can see that they're they're quite fancy, they've got some very high textures when you compare it to the freaking door here. Um, but yeah, one thing you may notice is how short the mo the rooms are, so to speak, because this game works on a bit of a map-based system. Now you saw us come in from over here, and we're just kind of here. I said kind of here, like twice. Okay, there is a bit of dialogue, but it's it's something you can skip. I'll just kind of get into the immersion of it at the beginning. And it's kind of here and there and all. There's no subtitles, so I'm gonna have to keep quiet. Now, yeah, so that was... So, we loaded from back there. When there's a door closes. That's another loading screen. That is one thing you will find is that sometimes the loading screens are extremely short. Now, here's one thing. This game has been ported by the community to the Source Engine using fancy new stuff that Portal 2 did. Hey, Mr. Freeman, I had a bunch of messages for you, but we had a system crash about 20 minutes ago, and I'm still trying to find my files. Just one of those days, I guess. They were having some problems down in the test chamber, too, but I think that's all straightened out. They told me to make sure you headed down there as soon as you got into your hazard suit. Okay, so, yeah, this guy firstly just comes up with objective. And then that guy's just kind of talking about stuff. But basically, you can see that this is where you gotta go. You wanna go to the personal facilities, because that's where you gotta go. And then you gotta go to the research facilities afterward. So you wanna go follow the green marker now. Don't bother... Actually, no, you gotta go to the blue one after. Don't bother going this way. You wanna go down here. Greetings. And yes, that was a loading screen, I know. Uh, but you want to go over here. Firstly, you can do some fun stuff here. Fun fact, the vending machines, you can push the buttons, and you can take the drink, and then you can push it again. And you get, in the game, you get one health. Now, I know there is no health display right now, but once I hit something, maybe you can make that start up. Yeah. My God, what are and you then doing? it explodes. I know, it's kind of fun. Yes. So yeah, E-Button uses stuff. It also kind of makes you walk funny because you're attempting to push things. Pushing works a bit funny, I just do it by walking into things, because because if you do it with E, you kind of shove things across. Now, here's a fun thing, you can see the names of the people. Anyway, it kind of told us our name already, which is Andy, but we need to get our hazard suit. Now, this is this is the interface. This is exactly what you're going to be seeing. Welcome to the And the music will kick up. Um, you'll see your health in the bottom left, you'll see your armor down there as well, and the flashlight in the top right. Now, the flashlight is something that you won't bother too much about. It's basically there just because there's dark bits. It does... Oh, gosh. You can also pick up armor. That will come over your armor. And you get health like this, but there's also med kits and whatnot. Um, so, yeah, the flashlight, it takes about, like, two minutes to decharge, and then it... It takes like 15 seconds to recharge, so it's a very good system because you basically never going. Oh crap! I ran out of my flashlight. You're just going. Oh, it's like oh, I should probably preserve it. Have I even got it? I've, I don't know. I just I don't know. Uh, now games like Slender where it just randomly runs out. That's just annoying. In this you kind of one you know when it's gonna run out, and two. This is all within two. It's not too annoying. In Half-Life 2, I kind of found myself running out of the flashlight sometimes, especially because until episode 2, um, the flashlight was tied to your, both your oxygen and your sprint level. So if you sprinted and used the flashlight, which there's no sprint in this game, by the way, it's just an always run. You just run quickly. That's the walk. That's the s You walk a bit faster in Half-Life 2, but you, you know, you've got the run. So anyway, yeah. So we're just going to go down. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So... As I said, don't judge this game on the first part. This first part's just an introduction, okay? Like, we're not we're not gonna get into anything that the actual game does. 
I should probably talk about why I'm playing this. First of all, I like this game a lot, and second of all, I want to do something that's a little bit different. I think that this game is a very good game to LP, just because, one, there's not that much dialogue. Two, there's, um, it's very well designed, and there's a lot of things to commentate on. Uh, loading screen, yeah. In fact, we're, we're about there, anyway. Uh, hello, Gordon. Ah, Gordon. It's good to see you. We just sent the sample down to the test Yeah. We boosted. I, I know, I find it a fun game. Now, yeah, of course it's not kind of in my style of just playing Nintendo games or whatever. Like, child friendly games. Metroid Prime was a little bit borderline, but this one's obviously the one that requires a bit of discretion. So, yeah. That, that's a fun quote. They're waiting for you, Gordon. In the test chamber. So anyway, ooh, there's a test chamber. They've got a nice window there. So this guy's going to open the door, and we'll be able to go on now. Yeah. So. Oh. <laughs> Jeez, their computers are quite hollow, aren't they? And again, remember, this is '97. So portals. Well, they're just high amounts of energy. I don't know what they're doing there. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so... Anyway, we're just gonna keep on going, because it's just, like, around this corner. We're gonna go. Now, one thing you will find is that, first of all, all the scientists look like each other, and second of all, they all sound like each other. And, so, in the Black Mesa Source mod, which I, I kind of talked about slightly, um... We'll be we talk about things, but in the Black Mesa Source mod, they actually did a very nice job of creating yes, different character models. Voices, slightly not, but... <laughs> this is the purest sample we've seen The purest yet. sample? Yes, the so yeah, basically they do tests now, now on the energy thingos. I don't know. Someone's done something. Someone's studied that. this. Although they know I exactly what's going on. A resonance cascade scenario? Hmm. Professional. We've assured the administrator that nothing will go wrong. Ah, uh, yes, you're right. Gordon, we have complete confidence in you. Well, go ahead. So yeah, they're, they're going to go off. Okay, so yeah, this is kind of the longest bit you will ever have to stand still in the game. Except maybe at the very end of the game. Maybe that. Yeah, you don't need to stand still at all for pretty much the rest of the game. So anyway, yeah, so we just got to go up here and... Yeah, I know, here's the thing itself. It's glorious. Jeez. Jeez, you hurt my ears though. What is that? That must be the sample. And look at that keyboard! It has a numpad! Although the F keys are kind of messed up. There's 13 of them. I know one of them is supposed to be print screen, but the other thing is that next to print screen is the scroll lock and the pause break. Or at least according to my keyboard, I don't know. Also, the Q key is entirely large there. So much larger than the tab for some reason. I don't know. Anyway, we'll just push this button. This will start up the processor. Of the thing, I'll just kind of be a bit cinematic here. I'll stop talking about things. I'll save them for the next part. Oh. Yeah, he's doing stuff. Okay. We'll take it from here. So, yeah. Now, the lightning effects, I don't know how they did it for 1998. I like the flare effect. That's pretty cool. But yeah, that lightning, it will... It does adapt to the surfaces and stuff, which is pretty awesome. It looks kind of dodgy there, but yeah, like, look at that. That's pretty awesome. Gordon cannot predict how long the system can operate at this level, nor how long the reading will take. Please, work as quickly as you can. Alright. So what I'm going to have to do is, we're going to have to go down and we're going to have to deliver the sample inside the thing on. One thing I like about... I, I always say one thing. Small discrepancy. Nah. Alright. It's the same. There you are. Flashing lights. Good game design tells you exactly where you need to go. Sounds. Things moving. You know exactly what to do. Okay. Okay. So we 
just gotta push this in. Okay. See you guys next spot. For a non-standard specimen, go ahead, Gordon. Slot the carrier into the analysis board. I'll see you guys next spot. Oh gosh! Oh gosh! Get away from the shutting down! Ah! 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 Oh gosh! Ah! Oh gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh, what's up? Uh, uh, uh.